Good evening to Lenten worship this March 18th from St. Paul Lutheran Church in West Point, Nebraska. We're coming to you from special delivery tonight via digital, digital equipment. The uh, sanctuary, sad to say, is very, very empty. And uh, we know that a lot of you desire to be here, so we are doing what we think is the best in the Lord's eyes to still present the message this Lenten season to those um, who graciously need it. As you all know, we are in uncertain times, and uh, we think the best thing to do at this time is to be with those closest to you and pray, and hopefully this situation will, will come to pass and we will again be gathered together uh, back in the sanctuary, worshiping in our normal fashion. Um, so tonight, we will proceed in an abbreviated service, but I think that uh, it'll be very, very adequate. So with that, we will start with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves free, and the rulers take counsel to others. Against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell you of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, and today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them, with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned. O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Our gospel reading tonight comes from Mark 15, verses 1 through 20. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered to him, Yes, you have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer. So Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked, and among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have them released 
to them to Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Good evening and a reminder that this Lent season, uh, our theme is eyes on Jesus, the things we see and the things we don't see. Um, If you've noticed, if you've been here at any of the Wednesday nights, uh, typically I start off with a question. And tonight's question is, Do you really believe what you believe is really real? In the 1860s, Edwin Thomas was a a master uh, actor in in New York. And he was a Shakespearean actor and and known, he had even won the critics in London. So if you were gonna do a Shakespeare play, Edwin Thomas was in it. Edwin had two brothers, uh, John and Julian. They weren't to his caliber, but um, nonetheless, they were actors. And the three brothers decided to do a play together in New York, and they did Julius Caesar. It's a little bit eerie that Edwin Thomas's brother, John, played the part of Brutus, the assassin of Julius Caesar at Ford's Theater. Yes, it was the same, John, that in 1865, played the assassin in Washington's theater and killed Abraham Lincoln. Edwin Moses, with his worldly eyes, could not overcome the shame of his brother's crime, and it forced him into retirement. Today's text that we read, um, Jesus is before Pilate and going through the trial. During that process, we see four questions that come about. The first question is, why did Pilate marvel at Jesus? I think it's really fairly obvious that Jesus' silence, he didn't defend himself. And this was completely contrary to Pilate's way of thinking. Here Jesus standing in front of the man who could free him or have him crucified and he was silent. And Pilate was amazed. And I wonder, are we amazed? Are we astonished? Do we marvel at Jesus? Or are we fairly unimpressed? We have become so familiar with the Bible stories that we don't know the author. The second question is, why did the crowd choose Barabbas over Jesus. Seems to me that they were disappointed in Jesus. Now remember, it wasn't even a week prior when he rode into town with palm branches and hallelujahs. He had healed their sick. The blind could see, the deaf could hear, and the lame were walking. But for whatever reason, he was unwilling to defend himself in front of Pilate And the crowd lost their faith in him. He wasn't the king that they would project it. So out of anger and disappointment, they cried out, Barabbas, Barabbas. 
Have you ever been disappointed in Jesus? He didn't act the way you thought he should. He didn't give us the things that we wanted. I have. And scripture reminds me when I get to feeling that way that he tells us, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as heaven is above the earth, my ways are higher than yours and my thoughts higher than yours. When I think of that, I'm humbled. Why did Pilate have Jesus flogged? The other two criminals weren't flogged. There seemed to be no reason for it. Even Pilate, with his worldly eyes, had a sense that Jesus was innocent. Whether it was from Jesus' silence or from his wife's dream. But in the end, Pilate was a man pleaser. And he had him flogged. And you ask, why did the soldiers so passionately mock Jesus? Same thing, they didn't do this to the other criminals. It was spontaneous. They all got together and they decided this is what they're going to do to, to Jesus. And part of it was probably because they knew, they had been around royalty before. They had seen a king before. And Jesus wasn't it. These soldiers had worldly eyes. And to be, the truth be told, they weren't angry at Jesus. They probably didn't even know Jesus. But they knew the Jews. They knew the bigotry and the racial hatred came pouring out for the Jews and piled up on Jesus. See, we use the word worldly in two different senses. One is a practical experience, a lot of experience, and you kind of understand how the world works. The other is relating to our world without any regard to religious or spiritual matters. Pilate, soldier, and the crowd all had worldly eyes. Even the religious leaders, the Sadducees, saw the popularity of Jesus as a threat to their power. The Pharisees saw Jesus as competition to their religious influence. So how do we get worldly eyes? It comes from a worldview apart from a biblical view. A worldview looks inward. A biblical view looks outward. It's God-centered. It's God-created. Sin equals death. Our Savior is Jesus Christ, and salvation is unearned. Heaven is our home, and this is but a campground. But without the biblical view, the worldview leaves us only one option. Eat, drink, and be merry. And all of our decisions are left up to our emotions and our feelings. Let's look some, uh, at some practical things, especially the coronavirus that is going around. It exposes our vulnerability and our humanness. A teacher shared this with me. They were at a store here in town, and they went to the store to get a can of Lysol. They were out, the shelf was empty, and when they went to check out with their other items, a lady in front of them had a whole case of it, of cans of Lysol. And she asked politely, would it be okay if I bought one of those? And the response was, this is every man for themselves. The biblical view, diseases come and go. It's a time to help to love our neighbor, to treat others the way we want to be treated. And what an opportunity for us to share with those who don't know the risen Lord. Prayer from a worldview is protection and prosperity. Nothing wrong with that. A biblical view, view of prayer is to spread the gospel and that he would use us in that endeavor. A worldview of the church is it's good to cover my basis. Maybe a social club. I can have business connections there. 
Or maybe it's American. That's just what Americans do. A biblical view is worship. And there's a lot of different styles. And then the world view of Jesus is that we want to follow Jesus close enough that we get the benefits of following him, but not so close that it requires anything from us. The biblical view is Savior, Lord, and grace giver. Edwin Thomas was waiting for a train in New Jersey. And on that platform, it was a crowded platform, a, a young man dressed in a suit, he was on his way home from a spring break, got nudged and he fell off the platform onto the tracks with the train coming. Without thinking, Edwin Thomas wrapped his leg around a post, reached down and pulled the young man up back on the platform just in time to miss the train. He did not recognize the young man, but the young man had recognized him. About two months later, Edwin Thomas Booth got a letter from President Grant's secretary thanking him for saving the life of Robert Todd Lincoln. Yes, President Lincoln's son. Edwin Thomas had, worldly, had a worldly view. His brother's sins were unforgivable. But after that event, he returned to the stage. It's really quite an amazing story. When the crowd cried, crucify him, it was a worldly statement, kind of a every man for yourself statement. But in Jesus' silence, he was crying out, crucify me. And that is a save me and you biblical view. So do you really believe what you believe is really real? It is real. The gospel of Jesus Christ crucified and risen for you and for me. It is real that God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would perish would have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save it through him. And that is really real. Amen. We'll now continue our service with our prayers. Let us bow our head. Let us pray together in the Lord's name for the mercy he has promised to all in need. For the church, the body of Christ, and the elected whom he has called into faith and fellowship through his Son, for this congregation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the missionaries in the field, especially Jana Englehart, Josh Lang, and family, and for each of us in our baptismal calling to worship, Witness, prayer, and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the nation and our president, for the governor of the state, and for all judges and magistrates, and for those who serve us as firefighters, police, EMS, and medical personnel, and especially during this time of coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the sick and those who care for them, and for the dying and for those who mourn, and for those who struggle with mental illness, especially struggle with mental, Ill mental illness, and those who are struggling with illnesses, Nadine, Elizabeth, Cassie, Jessica, Sandy, Brody, Brody Jennifer, Kristen, and Tammy, and that God may heal them according to his will and grant them comfort and peace in their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the grace to recognize Christ, the Lamb of God, for boldness to confess him before the world, 
and for a thankful heart to acknowledge all his goodness toward us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For a steadfast heart in times of duress, for strength amid temptation, and for the grace of humility, so that we may not fall victim to the pride and arrogance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For generous hearts, that we may humbly remember the giver of every good gift and the joyful return to the Lord our tithes and offerings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Gracious Lord, receive the prayers of your people according to your promise and grant to us all things needful, but keep us from those things harmful that we may be kept safe and secure in the arms of our Savior until he comes to bringing all things to their perfect fulfillment. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let me not cry Come to you. Lord Jesus Christ, the devil, the world, and the sinful nature constantly lead us to worldliness. Forgive our worldly sins and grant us the gift of heavenly mindedness, so that we might live in the world while not being of the world. For you live and reign with the Father and of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before we close the service tonight, I encourage you, those at home, gather around, sing songs that will be joyful to your heart and to your family. As we conclude, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of our Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.